In 1939, the Soviet Union began mass production of the medium tank T-34. Perhaps it wasn't the best in its class at the time, although it boasted a number of innovations, decent anti-projectile armor, and a powerful gun for the era, capable of penetrating all German tanks of that wartime period in any projection. Many revolutionary engineering solutions, including American ones, were implemented in the T-34. It was militarily undemanding, structurally simple, and most importantly, had all the capabilities for mass production. As a result, Soviet tank forces annihilated the ground forces and burned through the armored potential of Nazi Germany. That's why it often tops tank rankings, rather than all those cool German developments, renowned for their high engineering and manufacturing culture. Perhaps the same fate awaits the new T-90, not the most complex, but the most balanced among global tanks. And this fact surely was kept in mind by the current Kremlin leader, wrote recently in his blog a well-known Western expert in armored vehicles, Chris Osborne from the USA. This message was part of a larger discussion sparked by statements from several Russian officials that the T-90 meters is currently the best tank in mass production. Many didn't quite fancy Osborne's statement. For example, his frequent opponent, competitor, and colleague in a number of publications on armored vehicles in popular outlets like Forbes. The drive and the national interest, Kyle Mizokami, claims that the primacy in tank production has long shifted to Asian manufacturers. In battle, he would rather bet on such powerful machines as the South Korean K to Black Panther and the latest versions of the Chinese Type 99, also currently being produced in formidable quantities. They both agree that the era of Western tanks, conceived in the concept of super-powerful anti-tank self-propelled guns with a mobile turret, has passed, and most of them have long gone without upgrades or updates. Due to the producer's sacred belief in their technological sophistication and invulnerability. Or rather, because no one seriously dares to fight the West, and the time of tanks as the primary combat vehicles of any ground forces has irreversibly flown by. Well, let's at least briefly compare the capabilities of three machines whose names were mentioned in this endless tank debate at the high expert level. The Korean K2 Black Panther tank appeared on the market about 10 years ago. It is a 55-ton MBT produced by the armored subsidiary of the well-known conglomerate Hyundai, equipped with an original design 120mm smoothbore gun. The tank was developed over 11 years, taking into account the Soviet experience in tank building. South Korea once acquired T-80 tanks from the Russian Federation, and, as with Russian missiles for SAMs, in studying the acquisition, it adopted some experience. The latest upgrades of the Black Panther feature a 1,500-horsepower diesel engine. Although the main tactical and technical characteristics do not differ much from the T-90 meters in almost all basic parameters, except for mass, including speed, protection, obstacle crossing capability, and cross-country mobility. Additional armament includes ECMs and to machine guns. The active protection system is not widely used yet. Some researchers consider the Kata to be the only fourth-generation tank in mass production, thanks to its high-tech information management system, but this is more of a serious advertising exaggeration. The only foreign beer is Poland, which announced plans to build more than 800 units on its own territory. It has not participated in combat operations. All conclusions about its merits have been drawn from exercises and computer modeling. The Chinese Type 99 tank, like the Russian T-90, is a continuation of the Soviet T-70 to tank concept but differs radically from it, much like the new T-90 meters. The most advanced version is the Type 99A2, featuring built-in active protection, the latest information management system, digital sites, and control systems. Its main caliber is a creatively borrowed without a licensed Soviet gun originating from Sverdlovsk, the 2A for 6M. Honestly, it's also a kind of T-90, in its Chinese embodiment and with their high level of development in digital devices. It hasn't been exported, although there have been inquiries from various countries for the tank. What surprises the most is the quantity in which they produce it. Our tank manufacturers have barely caught up to them now, when some plants have essentially switched to mobilization tracks. In total, the PLA has over 500 Type 99A and about 100 Type 99A to tanks in service. It hasn't participated in combat operations, apart from demonstrations. 
The T-90 meters, modernized under the Breakthrough 3 program, entered service with the Russian Army in April 2020 and is a deep modernization of the T-90, taking into account Russian and Indian operational experience T-90 milliseconds. We are well aware of its merits and have often written about it on our channel Blue Link Active, so there's no need to repeat ourselves. Additionally, like the two previous types, ours has a sophisticated network-centric control system and can be integrated with the Arena Active Protection Complex. But unlike the Chinese and Korean machines, it actively participates in combat operations and its developers are addressing issues based on feedback from tank crews who have experienced the machine in battle. The experience of well-trained tank crews who, judging by the chronicle footage, perform real miracles, becomes invaluable. The T-90 meters in the troops generally receives good reviews, not only in television reports but also in private conversations and from the enemy side. And that's worth a lot. Also, the fact that the T-90 itself is the best-selling main battle tank of the 21st century is significant. The debate about which tank is better can go on indefinitely, as both enthusiasts and professional experts do. It's interesting that lately, the focus of these debates is shifting from Western Leopards and Abrams, whose high reputation, to put it mildly, has not always corresponded to their true combat capabilities, closer to the east, where tanks and much more are already being gunned no worse. And, it's worth noting, with a nod to the Soviet, Russian tank building school, everything remained the same until it came to the T-90 with a new turret and a completely rearranged crew compartment. Military expert Alexei Lyonkov noted that the updated model incorporates a lot of automation and a modernized fire control system. It comprises a digital complex that includes sites, target tracking automation, the bias unit, a tactical interaction complex for tank battalions, observation and identification devices, a smokescreen system, terrain orientation with satellite navigation, and communication means. The T-90 meters represents a deep modernization of the Soviet T-7-B. The tank differs from other models not only in appearance but also in functional equipment. It boasts a new 2A for 6M5 gun model 125mm, with a shooting accuracy 15-20% to 20 higher compared to other models and nearly twice as accurate while shooting on the move. The combat range has also increased. The T-90 meters features an automatic transmission system with the option to switch to manual mode. The tank's speed reaches up to 70 km per hour, with a range of up to 550 km on the highway. The combat weight of the T-90 meters is 48 tons. Thanks to weight reduction, maneuverability has been improved. The vehicle is equipped with composite armor, consisting of high-hardness steel plates. The tank is outfitted with third-generation dynamic protection modules relict, providing a high degree of protection against shape charges and subcaliber ammunition. Russian specialists have conducted a significant amount of work to improve the T-90 meters. The first models of the modernized tank entered service in 2020. It is absolutely obvious that, let's say, the same T-90 meters tank, Breakthrough, is our newest tank. But in my opinion, it is currently the best tank in the world. In the world, it is undoubtedly better than Leopard, Challenger, Abrams, including in its tactical and technical characteristics, even in such a component as weight, notes Dmitry Medvedev, deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia.